when you mentioned uh, you was in New York and have this this night when you everything shifted and then you changed your life my life changed uh, oh, uh, sorry the life uh, was changed yep. changing uh, how did you deal with all your social uh, friends or how they deal with you was this a problem did you feel alone how, how was this Uh, I didn't hang out so much more with my uh, music friends. Still, my couple close friends, of course. But after that happened, I was very much engrossed in this work, you know. And uh, so I don't remember actually, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. But uh, one year later, I was in India, and then. Uh, And then I met a woman on the retreat, and then a year later after that I moved to Sweden, because then we got married, you know. So, I guess it was only, once that happened, I was only in New York for two more years after that. And then what was I doing? I, I think I still, I don't even know if I did any music in that. I think I did some music, but I don't remember. And... uh I was no longer involved with the, my drug friends, we were hanging out doing drugs so that I wasn't doing that, you know. But I still had a couple of very close friends that I saw sometimes, you know. And uh, I was reading books, man. You know, I had a great fortune that right down, right before I went down my elevator, right there was a bookseller named Rob. And he, every day, wheeled his stand from the other from the west village to the east village and he sold books in front of my and that was always beautiful back then book, the booksellers on the road since amazon i don't even know if they're there anymore maybe but that was his livelihood and he turns out i then i started talking to him he was a buddhist so this was a great fortune right at my door and he used to come to meditate in in uh, vipassana center in massachusetts And then uh, I would always look on his stand and he'd have some spiritual books. And then one day he said, he said, have you read I Am That? I said, who, what, who, what? And then I went and immediately got it. And that was my Bible for eight years. That book went with me everywhere, to the, to, to, right to the end of my path. I had that book with me always. And then uh, what, maybe a six months later, he said, uh, I had been reading all these books and trying to meditate a little bit and went to the Zen Center. And, and uh, then one day he said, I'm going to Midtown today to see a spiritual teacher. I was like, what? A, sp a real one? <laughs> a spiritual teacher? I said, he said, you want to go? I said, yeah, of course I want to go. I didn't know anything about Andrew Cohen, never heard of him. And he said a couple things that I really liked. The first thing he said was uh, someone who I met subsequently. He was a, not a bad guy, but he's very philosophical, and very intellectual, like exhaustingly so. And he, he went on this long thing to speech to Andrew about his philosophy and psychology. And Andrew said, just take all that stuff, put it in a garbage can, put the lid on the garbage can, and throw the entire garbage can out. And I was like, that sounds good to me. I like that a lot. I was like, which is true at the end, you know. Then he said the second thing someone said, so Andrew, you're a spiritual teacher and you're talking all this stuff. Are you, as you say you are in real life, do you walk your talk in real life? And he said, get to know me. And I said, get to know him? I'm going to do that. And two days later, I was in Massachusetts at his ashram, you know, getting to know him, you know. That's just my nature. I don't wait for anything ever still now, you know. And then there I heard about a retreat he had in Rishikesh six months later, and I signed up immediately. And so really my whole life at that point was just focused on that one thing, you know. I didn't care about friends or anything. There was no hooks? No hooks uh, to the to your friends or...? No. I, maybe I ask... Uh, not maybe, I ask this question uh, uh, because uh, sometimes I have... Uh, I don't want... Uh, the people who want to be close to me and I cannot really... Uh, I don't know what to do with them. Yes, yeah, that's very, very common. I don't common. want to... to yeah. uh, 
be rude or something. Yes. So uh, sometimes I have no idea how to handle this. Yes. Uh, my one of my oldest and best friend Adam has no interest in this stuff at all, and he's I love him like crazy, love him to death. He's a musician also. We never would even broach this topic ever. Mm -hmm. Well, I never do anyway. As I said, I'm not joking. You never, if we, if you come and have lunch with me, you're not going to hear a fucking word of this from me, you know. Nothing. So if I meet Adam, we talk about music. If you meet your friends, unless they're pushing their spirituality on you or something, then it's challenging, of course, you know. But fortunately, I didn't have too much of that, you know. Mm -hmm. But if that happens, then... You know, it's going to be a little challenging, you know. Y you know, the last thing I ever suggest to anyone and is to ever try to convince anyone of this work. You've already heard me say it. F fucking leave everyone else alone. Just be quiet. Just leave them alone. Let them, even if you think they're lost and they're esoteric or whatever, everybody's fine as they are, in my opinion. Everybody's fine as they are. I never try to convince anyone of anything, you know. So what would I do in that circumstance? I would, you know, nod my head as much as possible and be kind and then maybe not meet them the next day for lunch. <laughs> but it's kind, still be kind, still be kind and listen as, as much as I could take it, you know what I mean? I can't take much of that at all, you know. I can't take any of it, but unfortunately, even here, uh, uh, people don't put their spiritual stuff on me here too much, you know, at all. So, but if there's a close friend, you know, and I did many people, Bindu lost a couple friends that were Buddhists, you know, and then she said, you know, these are Buddhists, and Buddhists are like life, lifers in prison, that's it, they're never getting out of prison, they're Buddhists, you know. And they're supposed to practice for the rest of their life. They're not supposed to get enlightened. They're supposed to practice. And she told one or two of her friends, you know, I'm, no, I'm my, very humble. And you didn't say anything hyperbolic, you know. No, no, I'm not seeking anymore. My path's finished. I'm just living my ordinary life. They were incensed, you know. How can you do that? How can you, what do you mean? No, you have to practice. And it was too much. So Bindu doesn't really have contact with them anymore. Because of that kind of, that's arrogance, you know. She wasn't telling them anything, but they're trying to convince her of something, you know. So it's tough. I get, I hear that a lot, you know, from people. My spiritual path is finished. And many people who come to me, their entire life is their spiritual path. Their hobbies, their entertainment, their friends, their practices, their books, their activities everything is their spiritual life their community everything then they make the mistake of coming here and then they don't know what to do you know because they're going to lose a lot it seems you know so i don't know what i don't know how to answer that for anyone you know but i know it's, it can be challenging for sure you know once you once the belief in all that stuff is gone you can't get that belief back you know how can you get it back on the path? You, yes. know, you can't. I'm very. <laughs> but you answered. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>